Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Graham. My name's Natasha Wernick, and this is our Conversations with Graham and Natasha, one of our weekly or monthly instalments where we try and keep all Graham's fans up to date with what he's been doing. I'm filming from beautiful Yukai, where it is spring and the temperature is getting warmer, so I'm in short sleeves and no jumpers. The fireflies are coming out in the evening on my property and the birds are nesting and it's just a glorious time of year. We're very lucky. We could do with a little bit of rain. We're now saving our shower water so that we can put it on our pot plants because it hasn't rained for a few weeks. But, you know, we can still go for a swim in our creek to, to have a shower if we really need to. So, Graham, how are you feeling after your recent trip to the United States? Uh, great. It uh, always uh, tiring and taxing, but we love what we do. And uh, getting on and off aeroplanes, it's not glamorous as much as people may think it is. It's just simply not. It's just getting to where you need to go so that you can um, get the job organised and then get off and do what you need to do. On this last trip, you went through a few states. You went through California and then you went to Arizona, and then you went to Texas. Um, you began in uh, California at Gail Garner Roski's place by the lake. Can you tell us a bit, little bit about that? Yes, the lake is Toluca Lake, um, and it is a private lake in the middle of Los Angeles. So you actually can't see the lake from the roadways. So um, it's a very exclusive area. Um, Gail actually lives in Frank Sinatra's old home um, mm -hmm. and they, her and her husband bought it off by Bobby Darren in 1969 and Bobby Darren hence bought it off Frank Sinatra. So um, wonderful woman, um, yeah I mean obviously a very palatial home uh, in a pretty just an amazing area in the middle of LA and uh, Gail and her husband Ed travel the world quite extensively and they're both very successful people in what they do. Um, Ed's one of the largest uh, construction people in California, I think. So they have a pretty amazing life to say the least. So their whole house is like a museum and they collect people artifacts and masks and spears and anything that you can think of, the thing called a dodong that the um, natives crush up their berry berry with. Um, her husband has the largest dodong collection in the world. <laughs> it's just <laughs> enormous. That is amazing. But just a really fascinating lady. I mean, she's just an extraordinary woman. Um, brilliant artist. She paints a lot of the Los Angeles uh, landscapes and people. Uh, and they both do really tremendous work on a philanthropic basis by helping Doctors Without Borders and, um, you know, contributing their, um, their personal success to a lot of other people. So I was really grateful when Gal came on board. I, I didn't know to the extent of the, um, the, um, the success of her and her husband. Uh, she actually has a privately owned art museum named after her, the Gal Garnerowski Museum. Wow. So, um, yeah, just loves art and loves anything that's creative and collects it from all around the world. So just, just a fascinating fascinating woman and um, just a great place to be. I mean, the history was incredible. All the old black and white movie stars uh, that are, well, the, the, um, the lady that originally built the house was in the 1920s and she was a movie star. So it's just down the road basically from Universal Studios. So hence the reason that Frank Sinatra owned the home just around the corner. You could get to the movie lots, do what you needed to do. But, you know, and it, was, it was great. We had a great time. So then after that you went to... Piping Hot, Arizona. And I think the first place you stopped was uh, to film Carrie Ann Therese. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And that was in um, per, per, per Phoenix. She was actually a lady we, we really needed to thank most of all for the other two ladies that came on board in the Phoenix area. And she just uh, rallied the other ladies around as well. So it was, it was great. Apart from the heat, I mean, you know, Arizona and the giant saguaros and the desert really is, it's, it's a beautiful, the isolation is extraordinary, but there is just this sense of beauty out there as well, particularly at night time and you sort of walk out into the desert, it's, it's a pretty amazing place. 
and they were sponsored by Delphi Glass Company. Is that right? Carry on for a start. I'm sponsored by Delphi, and uh, they actually make a lot of the glass products, uh, a lot of the stained glass that you can buy, and any glass that's used in the production of art or mosaic windows. Mm -hmm. uh, so Delphi is one of the country of doing that. So yeah, we had to put out a big thank you to Delphi as well for doing what they were doing, which was which was fantastic. Um, and then from there, uh, we moved on to film Nancy Christie Moore. Uh, and Nancy was uh, an artist, visual artist, uh, painted horses and were, I, it was something similar that we had that she had a, a catalogue of the Menlo Park equestrian event in California. And one of my best mates who I stay with when I go to San Francisco is one of the major sponsors and contributors to and riders to the Menlo Park. It's, it's probably one of the most prestigious equestrian <laughs> events in the United States. So she'd actually made the front cover a couple of years ago with her horse pieces and I just said, oh, my goodness, that's, um, that's one of my friends that helped put that together. So that was quite funny. And, but she did some fantastic horse paintings. Her and her husband, Jack, were really great people. Jack was a really, really nice man. And, uh, yeah, once again, just met some fantastic people and um, saw another very creative person. And from there, you moved on to Peggy Pettigrew Stewart. And she was the one that did the glass cast of your face. Is that right? Well, she did a mask when we were there because we wanted to demonstrate how all this came about. But her main intention was to create a series of the still existing musicians that are alive from the original Woodstock Festival in 68. 67 was the Summer of Love, 50 years, and 68 was Woodstock. So she knew some, you know, quite famous musicians and actually taken moulds of their faces. One of them was a guy called Norman, uh, Norman Greenbaum, uh, who I used to drink with in a bar in Santa Rosa. And Norman was the guy that wrote uh, Spirit in the Sky. Do you remember that song? Yeah. Yeah, no. so I used to drink with Norman like years ago. So anyway, Norman was a quite famous singer there then as well. And a lot of them have obviously passed on. Um, many of them are in their 70s and 80s now. Um, so she's trying to get as much information as she possibly can. Um, we may have found a mutual contact for her for Bob Dylan, which, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then she did my face. She's actually done uh, Michael Jackson's face as well. Um, some stage many years ago, she had a lot of moulds. Jack Nicholson, also Vincent Price. She's got original moulds of their faces from the studios in Hollywood where they used to have to take their faces and mould them so that they could put other caricatures on them. Oh, cool. and the face that she's got of Jack Nicholson is um, the one out of the Joker that he did in Batman. So, uh, yeah, just pretty, pretty fascinating stuff. And then she melts this glass through a special process she's developed with, uh, with these kilns. Uh, I think they're called Stotts Kilns. And then the glass comes down, forms, the, it just sort of runs over the face, but it doesn't actually melt. It just becomes very plastic um, and very malleable, still blazingly hot at 1,500 and something degrees, but it just melts down into these patterns that she forms in the bottom of the kiln and she comes up with these plates that are just extraordinary. So you can see the person's face. And then she puts all of these other little things in there with fireproof material. Um, to make a guitar or to make something that has to do with that particular person, like a pick, like a, um, um, a pick for a, a guitar. Mm -hmm. So just really fascinating stuff. And once again, she lived uh, literally out in the desert. There's healer monsters in the backyards and there's rattlesnakes in the front yards. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, uh, what, are, what are healer monsters? Healer monsters are the most poisonous lizard in the world. And they are yellow and black and they actually live in the deserts of Arizona and Texas. And uh, so their saliva is extremely toxic. If you, can get, if you get bitten by a yellow monster, it's a good chance you'll probably die. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of poison. So, I mean, how, how the Indians actually survived out there for as long as they did in those conditions, mm. you just have to walk through the Arizona desert just for a couple of miles and then to realise that these people thrived there for thousands of years, it just boggles the mind. It really does. It's crazy. Yeah. And then you um, got on your Harley Davidson and rode on through to Texas to see Mr Eric Rhodes, the one and only. Tell us about that. 
the blazing heat. <laughs> it's got to be a documentary just about that. Just some nut Australian riding through the desert. In the <laughs> with the long jackets all coming off the back and then with the silhouettes <laughs> with a giant question mark on top of the helmet. Why? <laughs> Hilarious. So this, is, this, this is for the gratification of all of those people across the world that love art. Um, I suffer from my art, as you can see. <laughs> We're doing it for you. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it for you now. <laughs> Not thinking of me, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Eric, Eric's amazing. It, it took me two and a half years to try and get Eric to come on board. Uh, and he is undoubtedly the leading art promoter in the United States. Um, he owns a company called Streamline Publishing and he publishes uh, many magazines, but uh, Plein Air Art uh, magazine is one of, one of his better known magazines, figurative magazine, American Art. And he publishes a lot of other art magazines. He's been involved in TV and radio and the CEO of a number of country, companies. Uh, he's an entrepreneur, very successful guy. And um, literally, I just just wanted Eric to be part of what we were doing. And it took him two and a half years. He sat on the fence line and watched what was going on and, you know, sort of thought, are these guys going to fall over or are they going to keep going? And in the end, he realised that uh, we were not going to stop. We were going to keep expanding the idea of the business and uh, he said yes I'd like to be on your show um, and be part and parcel of what you're doing so in the conversations that I had with him which was which was pretty special as I think that he would like to work with us to to build the idea um, and the the presence of color in your life in conjunction with what he's doing and then potentially have um, tours come to Australia which would be great and you and I live in the most beautiful area and it's it's an arts precinct, I guess you could say, because we have artists all over the place and you run one of the largest art trails within the area. So it's a combination of a lot of those things that I think that eventually will make the area that we live in um, very arts conscious throughout the world in the end. And I think working with Eric is going to enable us to, to do that. So, you know, I think once people get to, I mean, I'm looking out the window at the moment at the mountains, and it's like once you get here, you sort of go, oh, my God. <laughs> people, people say we didn't realise a place like this existed. <laughs> it's sort of like out of, sort of, like out of um, Tolkien's, <laughs> you know, you sort of walk into a place and go, you know what, there's, there's got to be hobbits up there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there are in, the, in them, their hills. <laughs> it's, uh, apart from some other strange things, there's hobbits up there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we've got our own unique style of you Kytopians and Mwilomba bears and crazy things. Great, great people, but So the next thing that's on your agenda is the New Zealand trip, which is only a couple of weeks away. Um, we might catch up with you again about that before you go, so you can let us know who the artists are. But you'll, I know that you're working very late nights preparing for your exhibition in December in the Brisbane Gallery. Do you want to just the Red Hill a bit about that? Yeah, yeah. It's at the Red Hill Gallery in Brisbane. And I would suggest that if anybody wants to come on board, and because I think the show will fill up pretty quickly, whether people are coming along to see the art or just to talk to me, it's either way. I don't know. Hopefully they're coming along to see and invest in the art, which would be nice. Um, but I'm doing a series on figurative work and some of my wildlife. I mean, I've been doing wildlife since I was a kid. But I've changed my style quite extensively over the years. And this is really part and parcel of a lot of the things I've, I've learned over the time of doing colour in your life is just, just mobs and mobs of information that you can't possibly put down onto one piece. But I've really changed my style in many extenses to uh to facilitate where i am at the moment and we'll continue to do so i mean i i would like to think one day i can sit down and do a guernica picasso and it's 30 feet long by 20 feet and i'll take a year a year and a half to paint it you know i mean something i think that to use all of the skills that you've actually learned along the way and then create some pieces that really are socially m motivating you know politically questioning uh, all of the things that we do in our society. So, uh, and that's 
a lot of people ask me, when, when are you going to get back and do that? I just simply don't have time at the moment balancing everything out, trying to produce a show and then be an artist and then be on the phone every day and then try and put this together. I mean, you just being somebody that's come on in the last five months gets, gets the enormity of what we're doing. So Yes, that's right. It's like a, a bit like a, an octopus. It's got so many legs to it, this company and this business, and, and you've got to be on to it the whole time. That sounds like a beautiful ambition to paint such a beautiful big painting that will take you a year. Wonderful. Yeah, even if, even if it was longer than that, it's just that with the way that the world is, um, I look at things very realistically in black and white and unfortunately um, it's, it's not going the way that, that it should be. If we'd have stuck to Greek philosophy 2,000 years ago, we'd be in a much better place. <laughs> so I, I, want to, I want to put that information down in a, a timeline of a piece that represents the facts and the truth about who we are as a species and, and where we lie within the universe. And I think that if you could do that within one painting, it would obviously be a very contemporary expressionist abstract type of work, but, uh, but something like that that really made an impact on society and so sort of said this is the truth of who we are um it may be my truth but i, I can guarantee you science is what it is belief systems are what they are as well so yeah wow well i think we might call it there graham thank you so much for your time today um uh, for okay. you fans out there, don't forget we have a fabulous community that we're building online. You can go to colouringyourlife.com.au and you can join up to be a free member or a premium member and we're dreaming up a whole lot of new exciting things for our members at the moment. So now's the time to get on board. We also have a fabulous online social media community. So Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, we're everywhere and we'd love you to be there with us. Want to subscribe to our YouTube, we really love that. We have about 70,000 subscribers now and also with Christmas coming up around the corner, you can buy some beautiful artwork for your walls or for your friends or you can buy some of our groovy merchandise. You can see Graham's hat and his shirt and all our DVDs are on our online shop that you can access by Facebook or by the website www.colourinyourlife.com.au and until next time remember to put some colour in your life see you later Graham thanks Nat bye bye bye, -bye. bye.